few parts that'll make this whole swap a lot easier. Get some extra coolant hose just for any that you're going to replace. The heat shrink. I picked up some more vacuum hose. I'm going to change all of the vacuum lines. Some wiring. I bought a new PCV valve and also some wire loom. And here you can see on the D16A6 manifold, I'm going to have to get off all of the old gasket. Well, that really wasn't that difficult. Let's hope that this piece comes off easily. That one too. I'll usually just use a handful of... Oh, this is sweet. I think it's so old that it's just... Oh, that was perfect. So all I have is one little piece left. Didn't plan on it coming off this easily, but it did, which saves me a lot of trouble. I'll get that last piece off, and I'm going to clean it up. I'm also just going to clean the entire manifold. See how dirty it is? It had been sitting in my garage for the longest time, and when I picked it up, I got it from a junkyard, so it was dirty to begin with. Here's a little all my parts after I'm done cleaning them. Mine was very, very dirty in the runners. Now it looks like it's just stained, but all of the, the gr grease and oil buildup is gone. I wanted to clean the intake manifold also before installing it. Cleaned off the fuel rail, throttle body still looks a little dirty. I will have to use the throttle body gasket now, which is no problem. I just need to get this one off of here. And I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble it. When you're putting your manifold back together, I always replace the injector O-rings. The old ones are usually flat and you'll probably experience some leaking when you first start the car. But try to make that a necessity when you're putting your manifold back together if you've taken it apart. When putting these on, I will keep them color oriented. Injector one, two, three, four. Brown, red, blue, yellow. If you have the hose that connects to the PCV valve, try to retain it because it has the perfect uh, angle and everything where it's supposed to be. It comes over to where the PCV valve is. Now the bottom one, which if it comes up, it's different on your DX engine because it comes up and it wraps to the top of the manifold. This one is off of an SI. Granted, it's damn near impossible to save the little ring. This ring goes right here and it holds it into place. But once you put this onto the back of the engine, and then when we plug this in, it actually snaps into place. So it's a tight fit. So once that's in there, I think you'll be perfectly fine, even if the top of it is broken. I'm gonna use it like that and just take the, keep, keep an eye on it, make sure it doesn't fall out as I start driving the car. Go ahead and also replace any vacuum hoses. Now on the back of the manifold, get your IACV reinstalled. Um, this we're not going to use. You can just leave the clip hanging. Mine didn't actually have the clip on there, so I'm just going to actually cut it off. We just need to seal it. You can go in there and make a plate with a little gasket if you want to just eliminate it, but then you need to worry about plugging this also. So I'm just going to leave it alone for now. I may eliminate it in the future. Now we're going to work on the wiring portion of it. You have a handful of plugs. I went ahead and pulled the wiring back up to where it's going to sit. That way you can judge the distance of how we're going to extend these. This brown one and this green one, which look identical, we are no longer going to use those. We can just cut those off. The green one, which is the idle air control valve that normally went to the small location on the manifold here, we're going to need to extend it so it can reach the back of the new intake manifold. Same with the throttle position sensor. We're gonna extend that one about six to seven inches also. And the intake air temperature sensor, this one is fine. It'll now reach its new position, which is gonna be here on the corner. 
You will also have this remaining white plug which has a really long wire to it. This one was on the back of the DX manifold going to that that I'm not sure exactly what it does. It has something to do with all the vacuum lines, maybe like similar to the one on the back of the SI. But we're just gonna leave that one hanging also. I'm not gonna cut them now, no need to. I will just leave them while I work on the other ones. Here's a look with the intake manifold on. I plugged in the IAT and the two that I need, let me get those both pulled out here. Where'd you go? Hiding down there. Okay, this is the throttle position sensor. So from here to all the way on this side, I'm gonna measure it. It looks like a solid eight inches or so. And for the IACV, it's gonna come around. I'll get my tape measure out. Let me check. After a little measuring, I'm gonna extend the TPS by 15 inches, and I'm going to do the IACV by 10 inches, just so I have some slack, and it gives me a little bit of room if I need to pull the wiring harness away. I'm gonna work on the TPS first. To give me a little bit of room, I'm gonna cut it right in the middle, so I have room on both sides to extend it. Go ahead and work on yours. Use some uh, solder, extend the wires, use some heat shrink, and then we'll put some loom over it. Here I have the TPS finished. I extended it. That way it's gonna wrap around the back and reach here. I'm gonna put wire loom over it, but first we need to switch the red, I'm sorry, the yellow needs to go where the green is and vice versa. So you can depin these, lift the little clip. You can slide it out. Same with this one. And then just slide it back into the opposite position. Now it's correct for the MPFI manifold. The TPS is finished with the loom. So as we lay the wiring harness back in here, this has more than enough room to now reach the TPS over here. So go ahead and extend the green one. This is the idle air control valve. You're gonna extend that the 10 inches. I got the IACV lengthened. I'm gonna go ahead and I said I wasn't going to but I'm gonna I'm gonna cut off the two fuel injector plugs. That way I can tape this all up and not leave any wires exposed. We're done with this part of the harness. So as I was here, I went ahead and re-taped up the wiring that had come, all the tape on here had come undone and it just looked ugly. I cleaned up all these areas, taped it up really nice. I even taped up the alternator wire, it was coming undone. We're gonna move to the fuel injector harness now. With the manifold on, we're now gonna create our wiring harness from the injectors to the resistor box that we're going to place over here. And basically there's gonna be all, f all eight of these wires. The, the yellow ones all go to the resistor box. 
the brown, red, blue, and the, the yellow solid, but not the yellow with the black stripe, these go to the ECU. This one is going to go to A1. This injector, injector number two, goes to A3. It's basically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we got A1, A3, A5, A7. That's where we're gonna run these injectors to. We just need to figure out how long we need to make the harness. I'm gonna measure it, start soldering everything together, and I'll show you when I have it completed. I was going to use the original, I guess, bracket for the injector wiring, but it's broken into two pieces. It's snapped. So I'm just gonna run the wiring and just loom it above the top of the manifold. You can go ahead and run this wiring back over here. Easier to plug these in first. And we'll actually put it like this. With your resistor box in its place and your injectors on, each yellow wire that comes out from all four of the injectors. It's the yellow with black, not this yellow solid on injector number four. We need to run all of these to the four wires on the red clip for the resistor box. I finished all of the injectors to the resistor box. You can see all four of the wires. I zip tied it together just to maintain a little bit of cleanliness and keep it all together. And that's where they're gonna end up at. Now we're gonna create the, the wires from the injectors, the power wires, I'm gonna loop these down around the back of the intake manifold, create my harness, and run it through the firewall. I'm gonna get to the ECU next because I'm gonna create my four, actually my five plugs, which come off the ECU clip, and run those into the firewall. Then I can, I can determine how long I need to make the wires to run up to the injector. Get your ECU, you need to pull it back. There's four 10 millimeter nuts inside here holding this golden plate, which is a kick plate for the ECU. Once you have all those removed, the carpet can sometimes be in the way. access to your ECU. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect it. I already have a wire coming through the firewall plug. This is my horn wire for my alarm. So I'm just gonna follow that one and feed the plugs in through there. Here's a look at the harness I created for the fuel injectors. I have, I've already put these all together. I have them labeled. This one goes to A15, A5, A3, A7, A1, and I labeled them on the opposite side as well. You got three, seven, one, and five. This one's easy. I, I made this sure this one was uh, matched up with A15. That's for, for the resistor box, so that one's easy to follow, that's why I only did those four. Now I'm gonna take all five of these, and we're gonna feed them in through that hole in the firewall and pull them through close to the ECU. Okay, now I got all of those pins pulled through the firewall. We need to depin the old wiring harness. We're gonna pull out one, three, five, seven, 
and also a 15. You can do that by, on the inside of here when you slide in a little pick, you slide in and pull away from that whichever clip you're pulling at, it pulls a little plastic tab away. You can hear it click and you can just slide it out. Start at number one. wiring up so I can actually grab it. With these, I will put a little bit of heat shrink around every single one, just so they're not touching. I don't think it matters regardless. But I will do that just to protect the ends. I don't want them touching against anything. Go ahead and take your, your plugs. Let's go ahead and do A1 first. This is number one. Where's A3? This one is gonna be three. A5 is right here. Lastly, A7 for the injectors. And A15. If you hadn't labeled them, it could be very difficult trying to determine which wire it is. And I know I'm using just solid black wire for everything. If you're uncomfortable doing that, you can go to the store and buy as close to matching wires as possible. I've done a handful of these MPFI swaps, so it's very simple for me to put it together now and just not making any mistakes by properly labeling which goes where. Okay, after you have it plugged into the ECU, now we can create the wires that we're going to run from the new harness underneath the intake manifold up under the master cylinder and connecting to all of the fuel injectors. You're going to run A1 is to injector 1, A3 injector 2, A5 injector 3, A7 injector 4, and your yellow wire if you have it labeled as A15 that one you're gonna run up and to the resistor box. And here I'm finished with my little fuel injector sub harness. This is the one that connects behind the intake manifold. You have it running up and then connecting to all four fuel injectors. And then of course over to the resistor box. Now that the harness is made, I'm not gonna connect it in yet because the intake manifold, we need to get all of the hoses connected and the intake manifold tightened onto the head before installing this because I'm gonna remove the manifold. I'll just leave this back here. 